All right, it's Friday night out here working on a few parts. Um, got a little bit of epoxy, getting ready to spray some of that. And that's the bottom to the battery box, and the other parts of it are here. And we got these guys. I don't know if anybody's noticed, but the uh, the seats uh, in the uh, let me just cut that a little bit more right there. The seats in the um, in the Mustang, the Fiero seats down at the bottom, they have a um, you know a hinge area that you know is kind of exposed and looks pretty rough. And we had these covers that we got from the junkyard. Um, and they were really beat up and wouldn't stay on and uh, cracked and all. So uh, found these online, and uh, they're actually reproduction units, and they were like 11 bucks a piece. So that should clean it up and make them look nice. They're gray, uh, so I scuffed them down, and uh, we're going to just paint them black. Uh, epoxy prime them, and then black base coat, and then do a matte clear on them. So um, before we do that, though, we're going to hit them with some adhesion promoter. So we got that, and we got... Uh, Here's our pile of old parts. We had a glove box door that came came with a car, and uh, I was going to use it. I, I think I could have made it look pretty good. Uh, the chrome was pitted up and bad on it, but I could have. We could have done without the chrome. We could have just painted that silver or whatever. But it had a big chip in its cast, so I uh, don't know the good way to to fix that. So we bought a. We'll use the hinge and the, and the inside of it, and we bought a reproduction glove box door. And, um, you know, it has this whatever wrinkle finish on it. So we sanded that down a little bit, and so we're going to hit that with epoxy. And I've got this, uh, I've had this for a long time. I can't remember what I bought this for, but um, JP202 2K primer. We're going to hit that with three or four coats of that. And uh, I don't remember this stuff being very good. Uh, well, what I remember about it was I left, you know, I had some in a cup when I used it the first time. And it, uh, man, the next day it had some serious shrinkage in it. And I've used several different kinds of primers and I don't remember seeing any shrink up that much. So, uh, but for this and as hot as it is, we'll put it outside in the sun tomorrow. And uh, we're not gonna paint it. We're gonna use some of that uh, carbon fiber stuff. And. Uh, might look a little tacky, I don't know, but I think it'll look pretty cool. But uh, that's the plan. All right, we're going to quit talking and uh, get ready to spray some stuff out here. All right, a little adhesion promoter uh, down there now. And I uh, got a little epoxy primer going on next. Let's left my uh, 
cap and lacquer thinner and it's all warped. It takes about a day for it to uh, come back to shape, so it's leaking a little bit there. But anyway, we got uh, a couple coats of epoxy kind of back to back there, and uh, we'll mix up uh, the 2K to go on that uh, glove box door, and then those are going to get base coat. Those uh, panels up there get base coat next. All right, while we're waiting for the uh, Bomber to flash off and put our last coat. We're gonna throw down the first coat of base on uh, those parts over there. Camera's freaking a bit. Oh well. Up those uh, parts up with 180 grit, and I probably should just use a Scotch Bright pad. It's got some deep scratches in there. I know 180 grit is you know fine for metal, but I didn't think about plastic. Obviously, 180 grit will leave a deeper scratch. So hey, who cares? We're gonna get base and flat clear on it, and uh, you know call it good. All right, now we're gonna uh, put our last coat of uh, primer on this. Uh, down here, so uh, bear with me one second. I hate to have the overspray be pulled across across that, so uh, I'm gonna turn those parts around. Got a couple of stickers that we're going to put on and some other graphics, you know, just kind of goofing around with this box. And I got some reddish gold color that we're going to lay down as a base coat or a ground coat, and the stickers will go on top of that. Gun still leaking. All right, we're gonna put a more, couple more coats on there, and then uh, we'll come back and show you what we do next. All right, we're using our little Harbor Freight $19 touch-up gun, and uh, this thing actually does a really good job. Uh, you know, I got the Segola touch-up gun. It's you know $350 gun, and 
I really can't say that it sprays any nicer than this one. Um, I mostly just use this one for primer, priming, you know, small parts uh, and stuff. But tonight we're using it to do all the painting, so we'll see how it comes out. All right, so we got the gold base down, and I mixed up some of the gray um, base coat that we used on the top of the Mustang, mixed it with some silver, and um, so that's the color we're going to paint it. Uh, because if you just use the gray uh, base coat that's on the top of the car, uh, anywhere except for that's going to be in the sunlight, it almost looks black. So I wanted to lighten it up a little bit since it's going to be in the trunk. And So anyway, we're going to spray over this Orion sticker, and then uh, we're going to pull the sticker off and then clear coat over that. So And just leave the you know painted gold letters on there. Anyway, we'll go ahead and get, get the spray in and see what it looks like. Well, we got it sprayed with our, I guess, dark silver. I don't know what you call that. So we're gonna pull off the sticker here and see how it looks. All right, well, that sticker was really a piece of junk. It would not peel off. It just, you know, it was a mess. I had to take a razor blade and kind of scrape it off. So we're going to scrap this idea and um, for the Orion sticker. And so we're just going to spray some sand it a little bit where I scuffed it and scratched it and, uh, and then spray some base back on it and uh, go clear. All right, so we got it cleaned up and uh, actually not too bad. It's kind of got a little bit of a ghosted effect on it there. So that'll work. We'll just clear over that. And then we got some lettering I'll print it out on a vinyl printer, just a few specs on the car. And uh, this will be a little bit of a ghosted effect in here as well. So uh, we're going to spray this now with some silver. All right, here's the lettering uh, in silver. Just a few specs on the car. 
I don't know, it's maybe kind of goofy looking, but uh, I, think it's, I think it's kind of cool. It's not really on there that straight. See how that's going up and how the tailor is going there. And you see the Orion kind of goes from there. And that turned out to be pretty cool, actually. So, all right, we'll get her sprayed. All right, we're going to spray some clear out of our cheap $19 gun. leaving a stripe in there. Alright, put two goats of clear on it. Looks pretty good. It's got just a little bit of dirt and just a little bit of orange peel in it. But uh, hey, no runs in it, which is a good thing. Don't want to be doing any wet sanding and buffing. You can see the uh, Orion logo ghosting in there. Kind of cool looking. Probably ended up with a cooler effect than where we started. So it's a good thing it was a cheap sticker. And um, we got some matte clear on these, it's still flashing off, so it's a little bit shiny. Um, and I use just the matting agent that goes in the Uricam clear. And I've, uh, I've done a couple of test panels with it, but I've never actually used it on anything real. So we'll see how it turns out. It's not a big deal. I really wish I hadn't sanded this with 120 grit sandpaper, though. It's, it's just kind of... doesn't really look that great. You can see a few scratches in it. So, anyway, this is a long video tonight. This is still really wet. Fans are doing good. Just got one on tonight since we're spraying these little parts, but really, here's up the overspray. You can see it's just a touch foggy in here. I really should have my mask on, but it's got most of it out of here now. All right, that's a wrap.